Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ryan and if you're new here, I make videos about houseplants. Um, today I'm gonna be going through my philodendron collection. I have quite a few that I keep both out in ambient humidity and within my greenhouse cabinet. Um, so I'm gonna first go through all of the ones that I kind of keep around my living room and in my bedroom and then I'll transition to the ones that I keep in my greenhouse cabinet. But yeah, I'll just kind of go through when I got this plant, kind of how the growth has done for me over the time that I've had it, and give you a little like insight into how I care for some of these plants and like the soil type that they're in. Most of the philodendron that I have um, pretty much have the same conditions and the same type of soil. I usually just stick with like a chunkier potting mix that has coco choir and orchid bark and um, just a bunch of things to help with aeration. Um, but I do have a couple that are growing hydroponically and a couple that I'm like in the process of rerooting in moss. So yeah, I'll go through all of those. If you're interested in seeing what I have in my philodendron collection, keep on watching. Okay, so first I'm gonna start with kind of a problematic philodendron that I have. Um, that is my philodendron fuzzy petiole. Um, you can probably see here, but it is not looking so great. Um, I bought this philodendron as a four inch pot um, in soil that was grown from a local garden center. And honestly, I've just struggled with it for so long. It got spider mites and then it just had trouble starting opening leaves and everything. So uh, yeah, it just kind of been just a journey with this one. But I recently chopped all of it back because it just wasn't doing good in soil. And I decided to try to reroot it in pond. So currently this is one of the only ones that I have that's in more of a hydro setup. Um, but I have pond on the top and then a Leca reservoir on the bottom just so that way I can kind of gauge how much water it's in and it is in just a regular like glass vessel. But I've had this for just over a year. I got it in January of 2022. Not the best update for a philodendron but it's still alive and it's pushing out a new leaf. <laughs> so. I don't really know. I might just end up giving this away to somebody who wants it if they want to rehab it because I really liked it at first. I liked the shape of the leaves and everything, but now that it is not doing so hot, I don't know. Just not one of my favorites. Um, next, I have my philodendron lemon lime upright plant. I don't know if that's like the exact name of this one or if it goes by something else because I've seen a lot of different names for like this type of plant and I know that there are some varieties based on like the petiole color but this one comes in like that lemon lime green color and then the petioles are kind of like a reddish tint. Um, this was a lot bigger when I first got this which was in October of 2020. This was like one of my first bigger plants that I found at Lowe's. Um, but when I was moving to this apartment, I accidentally dropped another plant on top of it and it snapped like right at this level. So I had to reroot the top cutting and the bottom cutting died. Um, it's doing good now though. It kind of just sits in this little like mailbox tin that I have. Um, and it's just out on my shelf in like regular humidity and it does fine. And this is one of the ones that I honestly forget to water a lot just because it is on the bottom and it doesn't seem to mind and hasn't like dropped any leaves or anything. So yeah, this is a super easy, like beginner friendly uh, philodendron. Next is one of my all time favorite uh, philodendrons. This is my original philodendron gloriosum. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I got this in April of 2022 as just a little stump. I'll insert a picture of it. Um, and it didn't have roots yet. And I just put it in moss and a little humidity dome. And this was way before I got my cabinet. And 
yeah, I've grown it from pretty much just a stump that I scored for $15, I think, at the beginning of 2022. I'm really happy with how much it's grown. Um, it has six leaves and there's another one on the way under here. And yeah, the only issue that I've had with it was um, when I first got my Ikea greenhouse, I moved it into the greenhouse and by then it already had like three of the six leaves. This leaf right here came in and I think it might have been a little bit too humid and the soil might have been too wet, but it started to kind of bubble up with water inside of this leaf. And yeah, it has just a little bit of like cosmetic leaf damage there. But for the most part, um, this just sits out on my Ikea shelf in regular humidity and it does fine. I like to keep it in terracotta because I can water it a little bit more frequently and I think that it really likes that. I also have this little gnome guy in here. I don't know, I just kind of found him so I stuck him in there. <laughs> One of my all-time favorite philodendrons for sure and I can't wait for it to size up more. So the next philodendron that I have, um, I ordered from one of my friends on Instagram, but this is my philodendron squamiferum or squamiferum. Um, and it has these super fuzzy petioles, which I love, and they're getting fuzzier as the leaves are maturing, which is awesome. Um, I definitely need to repot it soon because I don't think it's retaining enough moisture in the soil mix that it's in. And it's been in here since August of last year. And I think at this point, it probably just needs a size up in the pot as well. But the leaves are starting to mature a bit nicely and they're starting to get more of that squamiferum shape, which is really exciting. And I have a new leaf on the way and another little gnome friend <laughs> in here. I love this philodendron, it's so cute. Um, I got this philodendron January of 2022. This is my Florida Green, which I recently propped at the top and it's finally um, putting out a new leaf up here which is exciting. Um, and the prop I have out in my living room, it's just really high up on a shelf, so I didn't get it down for this video. But I love the shape of this leaf, similar to the squamiferum. I think this is the biggest leaf on here, but it's starting to really like mature nicely. This one really needs dusted badly. Um, I keep this one on a shelf that's by my door, um, like by my front door. Yeah, it doesn't really get that much light or anything, but it seems to do fine over there. The next philodendron that I have is another Gloriosum. Um, I think this one is the same form as the other one. I'm not sure. I don't really know all of the differences between the forms of Gloriosum, um, aside from like I can tell like the zebra ones out because like the veining is way more obvious I think. But this one I got as a one leaf cutting from just a local person on Marketplace that they were selling it and I was waiting for my little chonk to grow and it was taking a really long time and I really love Gloriosum in general just from watching Caitlin on Plant Life in the Tropics. Um, her gloriosums were just always insanely beautiful. So I honestly feel like this is a plant that I could have just so many of them and be happy with all of them because I just love the way that the leaves look and how green they are. I keep it on top of my tall shelf. It's kind of like next to a grow light, which I think is why it's growing out so like sideways and not like up. Um, but it looks kind of cool because it kind of hangs over like the side of my shelf. And the leaves, this is the last leaf that it gave me. Yeah. This is the most recent one. And I have a new one on the way. Um, I'm planning to transition this one into a long skinny planter. And I think I'm just going to make it plastic because it's already such a big plant and it will already be so much dirt that I think the plastic will help like alleviate some of the weight that this plant is. But yeah, excited to repot this one soon and for it to go through summer here again. Okay, the next plant that I have is my Philodendron Silver Sword. 
So I actually rescued this plant. It was kind of like at the peak that everybody was looking for them and they were still really hard to find and cuttings were going for a decent amount of money. I ended up getting, um, it was like a stick of eight nodes with leaves for $35, which at the time was like a really good find in my area. Um, but I got it for that price because it had spider mites and the person who had it before me just didn't want to put up with it. So I was like, I'll take it because I really love this plant. And it was because I saw wild ferns that it immediately went to like the top of my wish list at the time. I just brought it home, chopped it up, and I dunked it in like warm soapy water and I wiped down all the leaves and it did completely fine. The only issue that I have with this plant is that the leaves, when they're growing in, they tend to get stuck. I think it might be because it's on the top of my shelf next to the last Gloriosum, and sometimes it gets missed for watering um, just because I can't always get up there because I'm just short. I think that if I kept up with watering more on it, um, it would grow a little bit better and the leaves wouldn't get as stuck. My next glorious or it is a gloriosum mix, cross, whatever. Um, my next plant is my philodendron summer glory. So I got this pretty recently. Um, I think it was at like the end of January, beginning of February. Um, somebody had it that was local to me and they were getting rid of it and I'd been looking for one for a while um but they were still kind of expensive like I feel like it was like $45 for this size of a plant and she was selling hers for like 20 so I decided to get it and I really like the color of the leaves um I can't really tell though if this is a crawling philodendron or a climbing philodendron um, I've seen people kind of grow them both ways, but I'm not really sure which way is best <laughs> and I can't really tell which way mine is growing because honestly in the center it just kind of looks like a mess. Right now I just have this one. Um, it's in this pot and it sits out on my coffee table. It's kind of nice because it can just kind of do its thing until I figure out the best way for it to grow. Um, and it is putting out another leaf right here, which is cool. I love kind of like that orangey tint that they have to them. And they still have a lot of the characteristics of the Gloriosum, which is cool. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of see where this goes and how I'm gonna grow it because right now I have absolutely no idea. Next, I have my Philodendron Mykins. Um, this plant I had, it started off as a four leaf cutting in October 2020. I have all my dates for like when I got my plants. I started adding that to the tag so that I could tell like how long I've had it because at this point it's all kind of blurring together. <laughs> but this plant, hopefully you can see, um, it's pretty long. It used to be in like a four inch hanging pot in my windowsill but it got so extremely root bound that I had to pretty much water it every single day because it was drying out. But pretty much every like two months down here, I just kind of whack it and I root the cuttings and give them away. Um, like when I sell other plants, just because this plant grows so much, um, it sits in this pot on top of my Ikea greenhouse and it just kind of trails down the side and gets the north facing window light um and then some light from like inside the cabinet um but yeah it does really great um the leaves i think are really pretty they have more of like the orangey color they aren't as like dark as a lot of leaves that i've seen on like other people's mykins but I still think it's really pretty and in the morning when the light hits it, it kind of has more of like an orangey hue to it, um, which just looks so pretty. And yeah, I just, I love admiring this plant all day. This is, I think one of the only other ones that I have that's growing in more of a hydroponic setup, but this is my philodendron, like the neon heart leaf. Um, this used to be a big, 
bushy plant and I have I think it's like the plant that's in my profile picture um but yeah I accidentally underwatered it like for like four weeks straight and it didn't like it when I tried to rewater it and it experienced dry root rot so I cut everything right where it meets the soil and I stuck it into this pond leka mix and now it's really happy. It has a ton of roots and it's starting to really kind of bush out again, which is awesome. And it's actually doing really well hydroponically. I thought I was only gonna maybe try to root it like this, but um, it seems to still push out like a lot of new growth and it's really healthy. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep it in here until it gets so root bound that it needs to be up potted and then deal with it there. And then along the same vein, I have, I'm kind of doing all of my like heteraceum philodendron in a row, but this is just my regular green philodendron. Um, I got this originally in 2020. My cousin and I went to Mark's, which is like a local grocery store chain. And in 2020, they had these like massive, like, this is a six inch pot, but it was like an eight inch pot of a Hartley philodendron, like just the regular green form. And the leaves were like this size or bigger. And we bought so many of them. But if you watched one of my more recent videos where I did like a plant and accessory haul, um, you'll know that I basically underwatered that one so much and it wasn't really happy um, and whenever I would rewater it it was pretty much the same situation as my neon heart leaf and it was getting dry rot so I ended up finding a smaller like four inch pot of heart leaf philodendron to basically repot the original one and that one together so it's a little bit fuller um, but I have like a lot of this kind of like scraggly growth here because that's all kind of what the big leaves turned into um just because i think lack of light and lack of water for the most part which is completely my fault and then i think that this is the last of the regular heteraceum type of philodendron and i actually got this one today um i went to the store to grab some sealant for my window trim and i feel like you can never go into a lowe's and like not go look at the plants so I went into the Lowe's to get the sealant and then went down to the plant section and they had this massive philodendron Brazil. I just am going to keep it in my bedroom, hang up on that um, like curtain rod that I have that pretty much is just for plants. I really just love the colors in this one. I think it's really stunning. This is my philodendron Dean McDowell. Hopefully you can see that good. Um, it's kind of looking wild. Um, it, I just watered it. It really needed watered. So it's still a little bit droopy while it's like trying to like, you know, take in more of the moisture. Um, but this plant has been on just kind of a journey. Um, I ordered this from Jack's Jungle and I highly recommend her shop. If you do, they take such great care of their plants and they have really like high quality like shipping that they do. And I was so excited. I got this for myself for my birthday. Um, and I was so excited and it came in the mail and it was doing great for like two months. And then I discovered that I had thrips. And lucky for me, I had this on a stand that was away from all of my other plants. And I don't know, like that was some major luck. <laughs> Um, but I didn't really know how to deal with thrips. Thrips is like a whole other ordeal. And I had already watched Fern deal with thrips all throughout like the fall and winter in her apartment and just how much it was stressing her out. And I was like, I just, I don't want it to become that because it just, there are too many plants to have to deal with that. I immediately went to not dude's Instagram because I knew that he had used beneficial bugs before, but I didn't know what to get or like where he ordered them from. And he got them from nature's good guys. So I ordered, I can't remember the name of the type of bug, but they're like 
thrip and spider mite specific um and i put them all over this plant and then the couple that i had left over that i couldn't fit on this plant um i put like throughout my plant collection just to kind of help keep that under control if anything were to fly because thrips can fly and i didn't use any other like insecticides or anything on it um, just because I knew that I had the beneficial bugs and I didn't want to put anything on the plant that would hurt the good bugs because um, they were eventually going to help me get rid of the bad bugs. <laughs> I think you can tell like on the edges of some of the leaves there's a little bit more of like that orangey thrip damage and I only lost one leaf in total that um, I actually ripped it while it was coming out and so it already looked really bad and then the thrips really attacked that leaf. So far it's doing pretty good. This is the latest leaf that it gave me and I think another issue is um, when it got the thrips it started putting out a lot of EFN. So if you don't know what EFN is, it's extra floral nectaries. It's basically like the sap that it puts out. So if you can see it on there, it's just kind of like um, these little like dots of sap and usually plants will put it out like when they're either really happy and in good conditions or if they're really upset, if they have like a pest or something. Um, and they can also put it out to try to attract ants to come eat the pests off of them. Between the EFN and the thrip damage, it kind of did the one damage leaf in, which is okay because it was like ripped in half anyway. I was trying to pull off the catafil while the new leaf was coming in and I shouldn't have been doing that. So it's kind of my fault anyway. <laughs> but now it's doing good. I keep it under the grow light in here and the leaves are just kind of curled a little bit because it needs water and I just watered it. So it should kind of straighten back out a little bit, but the leaves are really like pillowy and I love it. I had some lunch and I took the dog out and now I'm going to get into some of the philodendron that I keep in my Ikea greenhouse. The first philodendron is my philodendron Florida Beauty. As you can see, um, the leaves are maturing very nicely. Um, the only issue that I'm having with this plant is the variegation. Um, I bought this plant and it had this leaf down here that is kind of variegated. I don't know if you can see under. Um, and that one looks really messed up because some of the yellow variegation started to turn brown. Um, I think it was due to like how I was watering it and so I just kind of trimmed off the brown part in hopes of like keeping it from spreading and then it gave me this green one right here and then it gave me this very pretty variegated one and I was so happy that it shot out this variegated one um, but it pretty much made it almost to the top of this pole and it was only green so the other day I chopped it and that's what this side is right here. Um, so I have three leaves in a row that came out that were green and another leaf that's on the way that I didn't know if it was gonna be variegated or not. And I had gone back and forth on if I should wait for this fourth leaf to come in to see if it's green. But I did some polls on Instagram and I asked some people in some of the Discord chats that I'm in. And I think overall the consensus was to um, either wait to let the leaf come in, but definitely chop it back to the last variegated leaf. I did, which is sad because I had this leaf that came in that's just like large <laughs> and it's so pretty. So I'm just kind of hoping that on the original stem at least hopefully it'll put out another variegated leaf and maybe who knows i've seen some people who have had like an basically reverted philodendron florida beauty and it's put out a variegated leaf um kind of randomly <laughs> so i'm hoping that it does it it's not the end of the world if it doesn't because i actually got this plant for a pretty good deal um, and aside from that, I just love the shape and everything anyway, and I'm a big fan of, like, very green plants, which this one is, and it's very bushy, so 
Whether it stays variegated or not, I'm not too upset about it. I mean, I would love it to be more variegated, but um, I think it's beautiful. And if it doesn't really become more variegated, I might end up just potting this one and my philodendron Florida green all in the same pot. So it's just one like super bushy plant. Yeah, we'll see kind of what this plant ends up doing. I hope it gets a little bit better though. So the next plant that I have is my Philodendron Splendid. Um, this is a super tiny plant right now. Um, I know that there is for sure Varicosum in here. I can't remember if it's a Varicosum Gloriosum cross or if it's a Varicosum Melanochrysum cross. Um, but whatever it is, it's really pretty. Um, I got this as a single leaf cutting off of Etsy that was really tiny. And when I originally got it, the bottom of that cutting was rotting and I was like freaking out because I barely had what was left of a node and it's like a very, very tiny node. <laughs> Um, that I had to prevent from completely rotting and I think so far it's doing good. Um, I lost the original leaf that it came with that was a little bit bigger but just with like the stress that it was under it kind of made sense that it didn't stay around. But I am hoping to get this onto a pole soon since it is putting out more aerial roots. This was another purchase that was made pretty much because of ferns philodendron splendid the next plant that i have is another philodendron dean mcdowell i watch jack's jungle she has auctions on friday nights she had a philodendron dean mcdowell for i want to say this was like 20 or 25 dollars which was pretty good i mean my original one that i got last may was definitely more than that but yeah i got this one with all of the efn that's on my original one um i didn't really know if that one was gonna make it and that started to do a lot better and the recent leaf that it put out is huge so i'm thinking i'm gonna put this one into that planner that's like right behind me but whenever i ordered this it was a trash plant and it was like i think february and it was shipping from Florida to Ohio. We were like in a weird time where we were having like 50 degree days in February, which like doesn't happen. But um, so I didn't add a heat pack to my plant order. In hindsight, that was a very poor idea because when I got it, it had like been watered recently, which like, of course, like the soil is probably going to be like somewhat wet, but it was like nearly frozen <laughs> so pretty much I got it and like the very end of the chunk was like already kind of mushy and then all of the roots were pretty much like we're upset you froze us and then you shipped us um so I cut everything off and I cleaned up the chunk a little bit because it had a lot of just like dead tissue on it and I stuck it with these two leaves on top of some spag moss and just kept a close eye on it to make sure that like it wasn't rotting and it was still doing okay, but it had literally no roots on it. But now it is giving me some nice juicy roots. I don't know if you can see them in there, but they are pink and they are fuzzy and they're looking nice. I think that this one is gonna be ready to pot up and I'm just gonna put it into that pot with, with that plant as well. The next plant that I have is one that I got a while ago and it, um, I think I got this in 2021, yeah. Somebody locally was selling three nodes that were like separate nodes, cuttings of this philodendron Campos Portuanum which I have right here. Now, I got these and I immediately put them into a prop box to root and they were literally three leaves, like three separate nodes. And they started rooting really quickly for me, but I had a really hard time transplanting them from sphagnum moss into soil. But I finally got them like kind of under control and was able to pot them in here. 
and I added this just like basic wire trellis that I like made very lazily um, so it had something to kind of wrap around as it grows up and yeah it's doing pretty good and I definitely think that the Campo Sport Tawanum is a underrated plant and definitely an underrated philodendron. The next philodendron that I have is from one of my really good friends, uh, Crystal, and she sent me a cutting of her philodendron man... I don't know how to say the name of this. Mayoi? I'll put the name up on the screen. I'm pretty sure I spelled it wrong on the plant tag and I already don't know how to say it. This was the original leaf that she sent me and it's starting to really size up. So it had this leaf, oh no, it had this leaf right here, then this leaf, then this one, and it just put out this long one. And then it has another one on the way. Um, I'm really excited about this one because it is more of like a crawling plant. And I think it's going to look really cool once it, the leaves really start to mature. Um, and I just have this in like a super chunky potting mix. Yeah, but this one really is seeming to love um, being in the cabinet too. I don't have any issues with like stuck leaves or anything. And it's been growing pretty quickly. Um, I got this in October of last year. And I think it's doing pretty well. I really like it. And I really like like the shade of green that it is and how shiny the leaves are. And the leaves I feel like stay pretty shiny even after like they're out of like their new phase. So yeah, I'm excited to see this one grow. And I love that I have a cutting of this plant and that it's one from one of my like really good friends because it makes it even more special for me. Another plant that I got from one of my plant friends that's local is this uh, pink princess cutting. Um, so it's currently rooting in sphagnum moss, but um, I got this by doing a trade with one of my plant friends locally and she gave it to me and I'm really excited because I've seen pink princesses like in a lot of videos, but I didn't really think that I was like really that into them or like their growth pattern or anything but now that I'm seeing them in person and like this one is like definitely like lower variegation but I think that the colors on the leaf even aside from the pink are really pretty and they're like really red on the backs and on the petioles when they come in before they get to like this darker uh like purpley red I think this one I'm going to be potting up soon because the roots do look like they're kind of starting to really grow in and I think it'll do really good um, like transitioning from moss to soil. So I'm excited to transition this one and then hopefully see it grow and yeah just become like a super lush plant. And again it's even more special because it comes from one of my plant friends. So yeah excited to see this one size up too. Next is a plant that has given me a hard time and only recently have things started to kind of look up for it. So I got this philodendron Milano Chrysum in May. I got this along with my bigger Gloriosum at the same time and it was just these two leaves right here like this one down here and then this one up here. Um, and it was putting out this one. So it like had active growth. It looked really healthy. The roots were really good. I transferred it into a slightly bigger pot because it was pretty root bound. Um, and I gave it a moss pole because I figured it would really probably be happy with a moss pole so it could climb. Well, I don't know what it was. It's been for the most part in my Ikea greenhouse. I took it out of my greenhouse for a bit because I was worried that maybe the humidity was like not helping it. I started getting this problem where pretty much after this leaf right here, it kind of put off what essentially ended up being kind of like a runner because it was putting out these leaves that were like this big 
and they were barely unfurling and they were really like not green at all. Like they were really like washed out and it wasn't even close to a grow light. So I wasn't really understanding what happened to it. The leaves were pretty much just like curling up and like dying off as soon as they would come out. So I chopped it right there, like right behind there. The leaf below it started to put out another leaf, which just unfurled, which is this one right here. And then right where I chopped it, it's putting out another leaf. So now it's like doing okay. And I checked the roots and the roots look good. Um, it's not really rooted into the moss pole at all. And I think it might be because I have more of like this plastic grid in front of it. But now it's like a stick and then it kind of splits off into two. <laughs> So I'm interested to see how this is going to grow in the future because it's kind of like having two vines up a pole now, but it starts off of the same vine. So I don't know. This plant, I almost got rid of it just because it was really frustrating because it took so long to even get another leaf out that when it started putting off those like little leaves and dying, I just didn't really know what to do. Now it seems like it's doing okay. I'm just kind of going with it, but yeah. My philodendron lanochrysum. If you have been watching um, my channel since I started, um, I did a repot. I think it was like my second video I did. It was like a Q&A repot. I repotted my Syngonium red arrow or erythrophyllum. I was also repotting my philodendron glorious. And since then... It has put out this leaf up here and it has another leaf on the way, but it is doing really well. It is taking to the greenhouse cabinet like a dream, like it was really such an easy repot and as soon as I repotted it, it started putting off these like aerial roots down here that have since like rooted down into the soil. and. It has started to root into the pole more, which is really good. And I know that I put more of like this mesh backing on the pole instead of like acetate. So it does have like a lot of airflow into the moss. Um, this one, I wasn't too worried about that because it's in my greenhouse cabinet and it does dry out slightly quicker than some of my other greenhouse cabinet moss poles. Um, but for the most part with my moss poles, I just take like a used water bottle and I flip it upside down and I drill a hole into the cap, um, or into the bottom because I use both sides and I fill it up with water and just let it drain through. And for the most part, it keeps everything pretty moist, which is good. But yeah, this one is doing really well since the repot and I'm excited because I think that the leaves are going to finally start to size up, which will be really good. But yeah. This is my Philodendron Glorious. The next one I got as a one leaf cutting and it had three nodes. And it is my Philodendron Majestic. Um, so here's an example of like kind of how I have the water bottles. I didn't take them off for this, which maybe I should have. Um, but this one is starting to actually size up pretty nicely. Um, the original leaf that I had was down here and it died and then it put this one out, which is kind of really small. It had another one here that didn't do well. It just started to yellow randomly. Then it put this one out. Then this one. I have some air layering going on here so that I can eventually chop this and do another vine so it's a little bit fuller. And I have this leaf but this one, and then it just put this one out, which is getting bigger. Um, so I'm super excited to see how this one does. And the air layering, um, it was pretty rooted into the moss pole before. So I don't think, I think this is something I can chop pretty soon and repot into the bottom. And I would really like to give it some like fresh soil because I think it could probably use it. But yeah, this one has been growing super easily. If you're trying to look for more of like this style leaf, like more of an uncommon or commercially rare plant, um, the Philodendron Majestic is really pretty. I haven't had any issues with pests. I haven't had um, any issues with like leaves getting stuck or anything. 
And this one I did have growing outside the cabinet before and it was doing completely fine. Um, but I have noticed that it's growing a bit faster in the cabinet. But yeah, this leaf is still kind of hardening off and it already has another one on the way. So I'm excited to chop it and then quickly um, get this to root into the moss pole so it can start sizing up even more. The next philodendron that I have was a wishlist plant for a very long time. This one just has like a really cool growth pattern, but this is my philodendron tortum. And the leaves on this one are kind of growing pretty crazily. Um, it had three leaves when I got it, which was this one, this one, and this one. And it was just about to start unfurling this one right here which is pretty big and it already has another one on the way it's still in the soil and the nursery pot that it was shipped in because i haven't like repotted it yet i did get this one in it was like the end of february but it's growing crazy and it's starting to push off aerial roots being in the cabinet with the high humidity so i want to repot it soon and give it a moss pole so it has something to root into um so that way the leaves can get even bigger i think it's really cool and it's pretty different from anything else that i have in my collection i'm excited to transition it i think i'm just gonna pot it directly into this cover pot right here and it should be fine this is my philodendron tortum and then when i ordered my philodendron tortum i also ordered this philodendron mexicanum um, this has been on my wish list for a while since I got the Campo Sport Tuanum. The girl that sold me the Philodendron Campo also had cuttings of the Mexicanum, but I wasn't as familiar with like growing these types of Philodendron or growing a lot of Philodendron in general. So I was a little too nervous to get it at that point. But since seeing them and like seeing how like purpley red the backs can get, um, it's been on my wish list since, and this was like another trash plant from Jackson's Jungle. So I got it for $10, which was pretty good. Yeah, it's already putting out a new leaf since being shipped. This is also one that I haven't repotted yet, so I definitely need to repot it soon. So I think I'm going to be repotting it soon and probably just going to put it into this terracotta pot right here. This is a pot that my boyfriend painted, and I love it. And I think that it'll look really cool with the colors of this plant too. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to have quite a few plants to be repotting in the coming weeks. Um, this is my Philodendron Billetii. Billetii. Um, this was a tissue culture that I got from my plant friend who gave me the Philodendron Pink Princess cutting. Um, she had some of these TC billies and she offered one to me pretty recently so I went and picked it up and it's starting to put out longer leaves which is really exciting and I can't wait for this one to mature. I have it um, in this cup with this like humidity dome on it and it's in my cabinet. Um, it just sits up right at the top under some pretty good light. But yeah, I'm super excited. This one has been like towards the top of my wish list for a while now. Yeah, I'm just excited and can't wait to see it grow and fully mature and get a lot of those like really long, pretty leaves. Um, I think it's going to be really cool. But it is starting to really root up too. If you can see the roots in there. So yeah, I'm excited. I think soon I'll be able to take the top off of the humidity dome because it'll still be pretty humid in my cabinet. But for now, I just have it like this in there. And it's like the grow light is like right here. So it gets some pretty good light. But yeah, I'm super thankful to have a friend that would give me one of these. Um, and I can't wait to see how it grows. Okay, I have two more left. Um, the next one that I have is my philodendron varicosum and this plant I have struggled with for a while. I have this leaf right here, this leaf here, and then this leaf here and I just had to pull one of the yellow leaves off because it was not looking too hot but there's also a new leaf coming in over here and a new leaf coming in over here. 
this plant has been a pretty big struggle. Um, since I got it, which was in August of last year, I got it as a really nice four inch pot. It had a ton of leaves. Uh, it had a couple vines in it and it was doing really good. And I brought it home and I didn't repot it. I didn't touch it because I've had a node that was a varicosum in the past and it has been like super temperamental. It still is a little node that has a little leaf that's barely coming out, but it hasn't like rooted or anything yet. So I thought that I would have better luck with like a full plant. That has not been the case so far. It immediately just started to rot on the bottom. And I don't know if it just was like a pretty drastic change leaving like a pretty humid greenhouse and coming into my apartment, even though my apartment humidity stays pretty high. Um, even in the winter, we stay between like 55 to 65 degrees just in the apartment. And then in my cabinet, um, it usually stays between 75 to 85. I've rerooted it like three times now, um, both in water and spag moss. And every time I transfer it to soil or transfer it to pond, it just throws a fit and it just starts yellowing. The roots immediately rot. And so recently I finally repotted it into soil and it actually took and seems to be doing okay. Um, I keep it in the bottom of my greenhouse on like the level that has like the most distance between the base and the light. And it's kind of under a canopy of other leaves, which I think helps because I from my experience so far, I don't think that they like a lot of direct light, even from a grow light. But yeah, this one has been a struggle and I'm pretty sure if something happens and this one starts doing bad, I'm probably just going to give it away to somebody and I'll probably not buy this plant again because it just has been <laughs> quite a chore. But I'm hoping that um, once it starts putting out more leaves and developing a better root system again, and kind of getting used to the conditions that it's in, it'll start doing a lot better. And then last, but not least, is my favorite philodendron in my whole collection. And that is my philodendron El Choco Red. Um, I think now it's like a Ruby Juvenile is the name. I'll put it up on the screen. But this plant was my first, I think my first, yeah, I got this plant before I even got my uh, Gloriosum node. So this was like one of my first more commercially rare philodendrons. I have it in this giant beer mug that I've had forever that I've never used for literally anything. And I have it in here because I initially had potted this plant in terracotta and I couldn't see the root system and it immediately rotted. And I don't know why, I think it might've been underwatered and then being in the terracotta, it really dried out quickly and then I watered it again and the roots just kind of turned mushy. But I rerooted it then immediately in spag moss and it rooted up beautifully. It had really nice like red and fuzzy roots and I was nervous to go ahead and put it again into um, like another pot that I can't see into. And I found this mug in my closet, so I thought this would be perfect because I can actually see it. And so I potted the chunk up in there. It's really heavy, um, but I don't know if you can see it. The root system is all throughout, and it looks pretty healthy, which is good. And it has another leaf on the way. Um, this one sits in my grow cabinet. And this is one of the ones that helps shade the varicosum because the leaves are so big. However, it's starting to outgrow my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, which means I'm going to have to transition it out into regular room humidity, um, which I'm kind of nervous about. But I think it'll be okay because I think if I keep up on watering, plus in the summertime, um, I'm pretty sure... My apartment has like some issues with humidity and we always have to run like a dehumidifier in the summer because it gets like uncomfortably humid. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay in the summertime. And I think of all times for me to transition it, this would be a good time to do it. These leaves are so pretty and when they come out, the backs of them are so red. 
and then the petioles when they first come out are this really like vibrant green and the caterpillars are super red as well i was thinking also because this doesn't really have any support or anything um i was thinking of possibly chopping it because it has this one section that has really nice aerial roots that are coming out that i think would root up really quickly but it's just beneath it's in a just beneath this new leaf that's coming out so i want to make sure that this one unfurls before i chop it but yeah i love this plant i got it from my favorite greenhouse which is baker's acres and they do a lot of web drops that are really nice and they have really nice plants there um i've never had an issue with like pests or anything or um like getting a plant that wasn't well rooted or had like rotted roots like they have really nice high quality plants if you're in like the mid ohio area i think this was the first plant that i ever bought from that nursery too i just love it i i think the leaves are so pretty and when the sun hits it the veins just look so bright green against like the dark green i love it so highly recommend this plant if you can get it. I know that they're coming down in price now and they're more available even if you like import it on Echo Genera. Just really pretty and when they come in and they're that like vibrant red on the back there is nothing like them. But yep this is my Philodendron El Choco Red. So that is it for my Philodendron collection. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing the philodendron that I have that are in my collection and which ones I am able to grow out in regular room conditions versus in my Ikea greenhouse. I think that pretty much all of these plants uh, would do completely fine if I didn't have the Ikea greenhouse. I've only had that since the end of August of last year, early September, and I moved plants into it that I just thought would maybe enjoy the humidity boost, but you definitely don't need to have an Ikea greenhouse to grow a lot of the philodendron that I keep in the greenhouse. Um, most of these were growing completely fine before I even transitioned them in there. And I'm excited this summer, uh, now that a lot of the ones that I've had have finally started to grow more, to kind of like chop them and experiment with different growing styles for them and just watch them kind of take off while the weather starts to get nice and it's not so cold. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in seeing more videos from me, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that way you're notified when my new videos come out. Leave me a comment below um, to let me know which philodendron was your favorite and if you have any cool philodendron that are on your wish list, um, whether they're common or uncommon, um, I'm always interested. I love philodendron so much. Um, I really have been loving Hoya lately, but I think philodendron will always be like my favorite genus just because they're so cool and they come in so many different varieties and colors. But yeah, let me know what's on your wish list. I'd love to hear. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <music>